Oh. Hello and welcome back to the Yonder Burst podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Savage, and I'm joined here by my assistant coach, Timmy Moody. How are you, Timmy? Good, thanks. Yeah, I was just, I got a little bit of a sneeze that's developing. It could come at any time. It's just sort of, yeah, it's, it's in the chamber. <laughs> in the chamber. Yeah. I forgot to add that this is the fan show for the fans, by the fans, blah, blah, blah. Just cheesy little slogan I come up with, but I'll tell you what I hate about slogans. Mm. Big brands come up with cheesy slogans. Mm. And I'll tell you what, one of the biggest brands that is in our minds at the moment that I really hate. Just get a call, menu log. Is that, is that what it is? Just get a call, menu log. That's my first topic, menu log. What's doing with the video ref? signage it's the worst signage i've ever seen yeah ref signage i don't think i've noticed it where is it so it's when they do when they do the video ref it's yeah. like they're, everyone's waiting and then all the groceries come out of the bag and go up the screen and then oh. it says no try but it's very like th there's no suspense that's my first topic and i think the the best video ref screensavers it, it was obviously the the kfc one was pretty good uh, uh, I like to see the one when they used to, to spin it around. You didn't know whether yes or no. Yeah, the th that was 3D TV. And that was the best one by far because the suspense would build up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just don't know if that was meant to be the first topic before we even touched on how our week was. But how was your week? Um, yeah, like Super Coach always affects my week. I had a bad week with Super Coach. This is the footy podcast. But because of that, yeah, just like everything else was just a bit grayer all week uh but pretty excited going to a new week i am too how did you find the every eight games yeah it was awesome hey it was just a just perfect time like i've been waiting for it for so long mm. and it's just giving me my my uh my what i need you know what i mean it's perfect bro it's exactly what i need it and when i'm lined up uh to watch the three o'clock saturday game which is my favorite time slot you sit back with a drink. I didn't have a drink on Saturday. I drank on Friday night and felt like shit. Um, it just felt right again. But then I sat there watching the game. Tigers versus Canberra. It's not the ideal Saturday 3 o'clock game in my opinion. But uh, we move on. So I went to the footy on Friday. Mm. And it was Penrith versus Parramatta. Great atmosphere. Great game. I, I think I want to go to more live games this year because... Um, I've neglected them in the past. I like watching on TV way better, but I really enjoyed this. Um, it's fun to get around the people, isn't it? It is. And I, Junior Paulo was work, walking off the field uh, and the Penrith fans were giving it to, to him. There was this guy next to us that yells out to him, Ha! Junior Paulo! More like Senior Paulo! <laughs> 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 and it just got me thinking about sledges uh. that you think are the best in the game. So there's the there's the obvious ones like uh, Piggy Riddell, whether you can call it a sledge. Maybe he turned that into a bloody nickname. Yeah. Um, any kind of sledges that you... you are you talking about people that play on names? Yeah. More? I guess the current one is that I don't like it because no one should fat shame, but fat trell, people calling for trell. Oh, it's a bit, uh, you know, it's a bit that people, I see that around in the... Yeah. the, the <laughs> The chats. Yeah. A lot of Latrell haters out there. There is a lot of Latrell haters out there. Yeah. There's not many that come to mind at the moment, but I just thought it was so funny. Like, just, I can't imagine what they get called on a daily basis. It's a bit like childish though. Like name. Oh, like, like so bad. Like, like, like my name's Tim Moody. You get Tim Moody. Yeah. You got no clothes on, mate. Yeah, I did. I've got plenty of clothes on. It's winter. <laughs> 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 well, it's funny because uh, Xavier Savage on the weekend he said his mates call him Cabbage the Savage, Savage the Cabbage. Yeah. And I used to get called Brandon Cabbage when I was a kid. Yeah. So I, I, I resonate with him. Oh, they call me Cabbage again. They call me Cabbage <laughs> again. All right, let's kick it off with the top five plays of the week. Number five, we've got the Moses Leota try was there, but I put in the Lockie Galvin to Jareem Buller to Samuel Afainu at number five. Uh, I think that just has Benji written all over it, doesn't mm. it? Um, I really loved that play, and I think that is just it's just exciting for the West Tigers to see that. Number I reckon there'll be more of it to come. They're going to play attacking footy. That's the Benji style. So And Lockie Galvin just looks confident, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, number four is the Ethan Strange tackle in the corner on Charlie Staines. Um, 
I thought this was a massive play for a rookie. Mm. And he's I th- a gun in defense. Oh, so he's so he? good. He's so physical, and he's so just like just wants. You, you know, know who he wants reminds to be in me it? of. I think it's more the phys- like the the way he kind of runs, not like the way he plays as such, but. It- could also lean towards that is Brimson. He's just got that sort of like, he's got a shakiness about him that sort of. You know what it is? It's when he runs short, stocky nature. Like mm. he just seems like he's similar just head solid. as well. Yeah. Similar kind of face. Yeah, I kind of see that. Eh? Yeah. Um, so he tackled Charlie Staines over the try line. And I think just that play compared to Xavier Coates going over the try line. Um, just typifies that how good a premium winger is. Like, Charlie Staines didn't finish it. Xavier Coates did. Number three, both of Reese Walsh's tries. Um, mm. I think just the way Broncos play on a week-to-week basis, it's just so exciting, and I'm just glad they run with it and don't go into their shells. He looks so confident at the oh, moment. I'm so excited for him. He looks so quick. Uh, number two is the Isaiah Yo kick to the corner mm. um he's done this twice now could he play halfback he played second row three years ago maybe he can transition from lock to halfback <laughs> nah <laughs> it's funny because i was There's no need for it i was sitting at the end that he kicked the ball from and i saw him like it was funny when he got the ball i saw him look up straight away. i knew what he was doing yeah. but you just didn't know he could pull it off again. Uh, so it was a very, it was very well placed. It wasn't oh. just like a one that they turned into something. It was like executed. To it was better than the first one because the first one he just had so much space to play with. Whereas this time, there was a defender there, so he had to kind of get it right. Uh, and the number one play of the week. Can we go past it? Xavier Coates. Xavier Coates. Is it the try best try you've ever seen? Well, I was really excited by the hype, and I was watching 360, NRL 360 last night, and they sort of brought me back down to earth a little bit, a couple of them. I don't know, it might have been Kenty or something, probably. Um, like, there's, there's probably better, like, more team tries where they're just like, whoa, and then, you know, those tries that seem to have, like, 38 passes in them that just go forever, yes, and they've got yes. games on the line. But I think yeah, for the 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 hot like the hype of like being behind and then coming down seemed impossible, mm. and then they scored one and then they scored another and just it was a, a stupidly big jump, and the way he still got knocked so much and still was able to yeah, it's crazy. But, man. but you're right though, like when you think of Nathan Ross's try, which it's been compared to. How many times do people bring it up? Like not that much, mm. just because it was like. It was a good effort, but when he put it down, I was like, "Nah, he didn't put it down. Like mm. it was just he was it was just a hail mary." But just the athleticism. Oh I think it's because it's so new. To, like we've seen that that jump before. It's, we've seen it plenty of times, but it's fairly new to rugby league with the corner post. Um, you know, having that being removed that it doesn't matter if you contact it um, in trying to score a try, and also the fact that our, our, our wingers and that are getting so much more athletic like you, you weren't seeing those tries 15 years ago like they weren't jumping like that for the trial one at all no they won't no they won't um and i guess that brings us on to timmy's tangent okay timmy's tangent okay so um let me just confirm which game it was uh there was a game where the referees had to evacuate their change rooms what yeah so there was a sewage malfunction at the sharks and dogs game uh, the refs were forced to evacuate. Uh, so, which just got me thinking. It kind of reminded me of a ref and ref and poo situation. And I was playing junior footy. I was in about under tens, and uh, the ref had done a a runny poo down his leg, which stayed there, stained for the rest of the game. Which was good on him. He you know, didn't have you know obviously no touchy to come on. It was just some dads on the side ones still running touchies at that age. Oh. So uh, he took a few strong carries back then. But it also got me thinking. What could a player do with this? How, like, if I wouldn't say I took the field and I'm a player, I'm having a bit of a, you know, not not so, so much of a good game, and I, I want to get the upper hand for my side, a little bit of an edge. So I take a poo in my pants. <laughs> Who's going to want to tackle me? Like, you get the tackle is right usually around there. Like, you're going to smell that. Man. Yeah. Like, do you reckon? Like, do you get sent off for poo in your pants? Like, what? What if you take a poo in your pants and you're fine with it? Is it play on or? 
at some point just a rep go, mate. <laughs> get ten, go change your undies, have a shower, come back, or did you send you for the game? Or I mean, last week we talked about um, we talked about tactics that can you put You can off tell your I'm opponent. a cheat, eh? Like I'm always trying to find a way to intimidate the opposition or find an upper hand. Well, so you think just. Poo your pants. Poo your pants. Comp- like, I don't think it's... But you've got to think out so like the like the big grand final, you know what I mean? Like Moses Leota, imagine trying to tackle him with pooey pants. <laughs> and it's really stinky too because it sweat, sits in the pants. Sweat it's not, and yeah. stink. Oh, my God. I think it's something to be looked into. I think that, you know, the Tigers should at least try it. <laughs> no, I don't want to tackle him. I've actually got something to add to Timmy's tangent this week. So when, um, when Latrell... Went over for his f- try in the last seconds of the game. Him and Reese Walsh had a nice little moment. Yeah, I reckon that Luttrell felt like um, Walsh was stealing the camera moment with the thing and was like, and Walsh was a bit like, oh, can you help me out? And he was a bit like, I'm the big dog. I'm not helping you do your thing. I'll have one too. We've both got one. I don't reckon Luttrell had that, one. No, that's not the moment I'm talking about. Yes, oh. they both had cramps, but. It was real nice when they got together and Latrell gave Walsh a hug. It was like, I'm the big dog. Mm. You're the new guy on the scene. I respect you for Mm. what you're doing. And it just kind of reminds me, like, these players, like, we think they just know everyone each other but like Reese Walsh and Latrell Mitchell probably wouldn't have spent too much time together like yeah, probably just on social media yeah just exactly sort of how much does Latrell like his things and how much does he like his stuff yeah, back that's it. Is, would be a gauge of their friendship who do you think like you look at them and you definitely think they won't be friends like from different clubs yeah or that you think they'll be like best friends so like I'm thinking Walsh and Ponga will probably be like best buds. Yeah, but there's so much alike too that it's like alpha versus alpha. Yeah, and like I've always found like if someone had like a, almost the same personality as me, or even the name Tim, like when there was a new <laughs> a new guy at school and they said his name was Tim, I freaked out. Like that was my name, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had I had about three Tims at one stage in my yeah. school. And it was just too much for me to deal with. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What was my point? Uh. Ponger and Walsh, friends? Yeah, I don't think they'd be... I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think they'd hate each other, but I don't think they'd compliment each other. You don't think so? I think Harry Grant seems to be friends with a lot of people. Seems like he'll be... like And Cooper Johns seems like they're friends with everyone. Mm. Tom Trebojevic doesn't seem like he'd be very friendly with too many seems people. Seems like the guy at school that ate his lunch by himself and yeah. was just doing extra study and making sure... like. I'll tell you who I actually think would be the best friends. And they got similar rigs too. Jake Trebojevic and Jermaine Hopgood. Yeah, I can kind of picture that. Yeah. We we're, were standing behind Jermaine Hopgood the other day and one of the guys I went to the footy with was like, he's got a very average rig, does he? <laughs> like he'd be fit as fuck, but he's got any, the exact rig that Jake Trebojevic has. And right, I, think, I they, think if Jake is having a worse rig than Hopgood. Very, oh, very similar, it looks. All right, uh, moving on to our tips of the week. Brought to you by Picklebet. Using the code TURBO when signing up, that lets them know that you're coming from us. Uh, but make sure to know what you're really gambling with. For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Timmy, you did a twenty to ten thousand dollar challenge on the weekend. You fell probably twenty percent short. Am I right in nah, saying that? No, no, no. No, you fell two hundred. I'm not the mask guy, but it's not twenty percent. It's twenty percent. You got to like what five hundred? Oh yeah, you, maybe you are right. I got six hundred and six. oh, I got that got wrong. Yeah, look, it, I, I got about five bets in a row right. Yeah, I'm just trying to double each bet. Yeah, but I'm looking for dollar no, fifty but, odds. But what you started with, you started with twenty dollars doubling it. Yeah, and then because it was risk free early on, it yep. felt. Then it got higher. You you were doing less. I'm trying and to less get my bets. teeth done, mate. I'm trying to get. I need to get some ten thousand dollars. I need to go over to Turkey, and that seems to be the best way for me to get it done. Can't you just do it through? Australia or is it like heaps? Oh, it's expensive. Heaps expensive? Yeah, all very expensive. Okay. All right. Um, so 20 to a $10,000 challenge we should try and do this weekend. Yep. Um, if you are, are you willing to share what bets you're doing? Oh, of course. If you want to. So if you the, are. The problem is though, a lot of my bets, they do come right before the game. Like, yeah, I know they do. So 
this is something we'll try. You need to be like watching yeah, we'll, the space. We'll, we'll trial. We'll put a thread up on uh, our NRL Supercoach Experience Facebook group, mm. and Timmy will just post them in there when he does it. it. It could be five minutes before the game, could be ten minutes before the game, at best. <laughs> to be honest, I'll try and make it um, twenty if I can. And what he'll do is, uh, I like what he's doing. He's being very smart with it. So. Um, We'll do that. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so the way I'm sort of trying to structure these bets, if like, say a side's got like a line of eight and a half head start, I'll go into find my own line and give them about like a 22. I'll just give yeah. them that extra point yeah. start. And then with the overs points, I think there's going to be a lot of points in the game. High scoring or low scoring. Yeah. You choose your own uh, points total? Total points as well, yeah. yeah. So then I'll just like be really go well over and say that there'll be under... Like yep. nearly 60. 60. Yeah. And it, it works or out over, to be, you know, 28. Works out to be a dollar thirty or something. I'll jump on it with you this weekend. Cool. Uh, but via Picklebet, um, he may be sharing from another sports betting agency. Well, it depends if I can find the multi. It just depends. Yeah. On, you know, I bet with different yeah. bookies just depending on where the odds are. Yep. Often on Picklebet for good reason. <laughs> um, Panthers versus Broncos. I'm going the Panthers at dollar twenty seven. And mind you, I'm nine from 16. You're eight from 16. Oh, nice. I'm only one behind you. Yeah. So I've caught up a little bit this yeah, week. Yeah, well, I dropped two tips over the weekend. I oh, tip, to me. Dropped two on me. Uh, I tipped the Roosters and I tipped the Warriors. Oh, and I tipped the Rabbitohs. So the five I got the week before, redundant now. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, Panthers versus Broncos. I got Panthers at dollar twenty seven. Yeah, I'll take Penrith as well. Roosters versus the Rabbitohs. This is a tough one. I think this is one where I'll be... Did you skip a game? No. Warriors, Canberra? Oh, that's that's after this on for some reason. But Warriors versus Canberra, dollar thirty six versus three dollars twenty. I am going the Warriors. They're yep. probably the best team to go. And they need to a win. They're due. Yeah. A uh, dollar thirty six at home. Uh, Roosters versus Rabbitohs, dollar fifty nine versus two dollars thirty eight. I'm going to take the Roosters. I'm just going to keep sticking with the winning formula. I'm going to go the Rabbitohs just because Luke Keery's out. And I think Sandon, oh, I think thing, Sandon yeah. Smith is just a bit – he doesn't suit that side. He's a good player, doesn't you suit – You know what? I'll kind of, I might change too. I was thinking of the Hawkins yep. thing, but that – I just. I think Hawkins is – it, it could lift their thing yep. just because they're trying something different. Hawkins and White and Back – I love it. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that too. And the fact that they're zero and two, they they need to answer the critics. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Bulldogs versus the Titans. Bulldogs are a dollar eighty one. Titans are two dollars one. You got this one back to the front as well. Oh uh, yeah, it's just the way pickle bets laid it out, eh? That's okay. Whatever. Uh, I'll go the Titans. Uh, Titans versus Dolphins. Hey, yeah. Well, first dogs. Oh, I'm looking at round four. That's why we're looking at different layouts, probably. <laughs> Okay, what? how did I get my last tips in? Um, Just choose. Titans versus Dogs. Mm, I'll go Titans. Yep. Kill uh, back. Yep. Cowboys versus the Dragons. I'll go the Cowboys at $1.38. The reason I like the Titans too is just because they've had a week off to yep. to fix what they didn't yep. get right. Um, the next game was the, t- the North Queensland game. Yep. Yep. Cowboys. Sharks versus the Tigers. I'll go the Sharks at $1.24. Sharks. Uh, Eels versus the Manly Seagulls. I'm going Manly at two dollars eight. Yeah, I'm leaning that way too. Let me just have a quick look and see if there's any. Yeah, I'll, I'll go that. Just the turbo factor. Uh, Newcastle Knights versus the Melbourne Storm rounds out the round. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to go the Melbourne Storm at two dollars eight. They're outsiders. I'm going to go the Knights for an upset. I just think the Storm can allow. It's not an upset if they're favourites. Oh, in my mind, there was an upset. They were two dollars and eight. When I last looked, but okay. So the, the Storm are now outsiders, are they? Yep. Yep. Well, I'm, I like Newcastle. I think the Storm mentally can allow this as a loss. They've had two good games and they've got big guns out, so in the halves. And the Knights don't necessarily need it, but I think that they their form needs it, especially with the fact that they've replaced one of their halves as well. Yep. All right, cool. And that is brought to you by Picklebet. Ma- make sure to know what you Quick really fun thing that did. I did see, a bit related to on the burst this, today. Yeah. Um, I was just leaving the shopping centre that I was working at and the docks. You know, I've spoken about the docks that have the um, big plastic things yep. that you push through, yep. similar to the fish and chip shop back in the days. Um, 
I used to like running out out there, or still do. I saw a little kid do it today, but just outside of the um, other side, which he couldn't see, was some trolleys all lined up, and he was ah ran through it. And I was like, yeah, this kid's mad. But I didn't see what was there either, and then he just went boom. Oh my god! Into a trolley, poor little bugger. That's so funny. I yeah. love that. It was funny, but I I managed to not laugh. Nah, at the time. I I laugh at that yeah. stuff. I, well, I couldn't laugh at him, mate. It was painful. It was hard. It was too rough. Oh. But on the burst, good on him. <laughs> hey, well, he was on the <laughs> He's burst. On the he burst, was on the burst. All right, we'll finish it up with some blind rankings. Let's go, Dan Gay Guy. Oh, uh, three. Justin Hodges. Ooh, two. Greg Inglis. One. Fuck. Um,. No, don't make him up. No, no, it wasn't. Xavier Coates. Five. And Valentine Holmes. Four. four. That puts him at four because I went three, two, one. Yeah, you probably nailed it. I reckon I went pretty close. I reckon I might put Val Holmes. I know Gay Guy's a bit older, so he's he's probably got more runs under his belt. Holmes did spend some time away. I I think Gay Guy has had... Origin-wise, he's he's been... uh, No, Gay Guy's had bigger... Origin performances mm. and like better car- career over the but NRL wise Holmes shits on him and Origin wise Holmes actually they're both very good. I think Holmes in Origin like playing on the wing he's been one of their best try scorers as well. So yeah, pretty happy but, with that but, order. But Hodges like I'd probably put Hodges below them to be honest. Yeah, yeah. You're- that's probably fair, yeah. Like, I think if we look back after these guys retire... I just look at, like, the, just the, like a Broncos side, and I just think of, like, a lot of, like, these retired... Like the Corey Parkers with the Darren Lockyers and... Yeah, just the, there's a vibe around was. Broncos. Like, yeah. you, you say a Broncos player, and it just sort of almost... But like them as a player, like, imagine Dane Gagai in that side. Yeah, yeah, like, true. Yeah, I'd like, be... I'd be Those three, I'd be happy to move around a bit. Yep. All right, cheers for tuning in this week and uh, we'll see you next week.